Good afternoon, Texas Pelicans. Uh, welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the Pelicans Ditch Spreadsheet, which has been out for quite a while, but I'm um, going to try to give everyone a feel for um, just how detailed to get in ditch calculations, specifically on highway projects and what we're kind of looking to figure out when we do our ditch calculations. So I will go ahead and pull up the spreadsheet we have. So getting started, uh, first of all, I tell um, most of our engineers, and sometimes they think I'm joking, but I'm really not. If you are going to call yourself a drainage engineer, you really need to have a good gut feel for what kind of uh, what kind of ditches you're going to need given a certain amount of flow you need to have you need to have Manning's equation uh, down like the back of your hand um, and you need to know oh I got five CFS and I've got a five foot flat bottom ditch with two feet of depth going at 0.5 percent that's not a problem it's going to have capacity and um, I've got that experience just from doing tons of design over the years, but if you do not have that experience yet, what I recommend in the ditch capacity spreadsheet or any software, you can go to a tab like this and just start playing with it till you get a good, a good ballpark feel for how much a ditch would be needed for certain flows. I mean, I'm not saying you need to be able to know the exact CFS the channel is going to carry, but um, when doing the design, before we even get into ditch calculations, we've had to lay out the design and we will actually go through and do the ditch calculations. Hopefully we've got a, a good design laid out that we're just kind of doing confirmations. And the main thing we're confirming is um, we're looking for tight spots where we think it might be low on capacity, and then we're looking for places where we might need lining to protect from erosion, uh, which is going to be steeper parts of the ditch and in places with higher velocities. Um, but as far as laying out a system, you almost need to be able to do that by by just it, it, if we have the advantage of having open ditch system. Um, you almost mean, need to be able to do that by feel and by just saying yes, because usually ditches have more capacity than we're putting to them on roadway projects. We're not talking, you know, major channels where we're hearing thousands of CFS. Um, highway projects, we, we like to have, um, when possible, bigger ditches, um, usually a foot or two deep, and usually we're just talking about the the internal drainage that's going to these. So it shouldn't be hard to size these appropriately and get enough capacity. And then we're we are we are not going to do the calculations as we go. Or if you had a 12 mile long project and you're trying to do that, I think you'd be spending a lot of time. Um, I think it's more of you, you design it first and then you come back and we do some checks. Um, so I would recommend if you don't have that feel, coming in here playing with okay what if i had a five foot bottom width one foot depth six to one side slopes and a longitudinal slope of 0 0.005 you know that right there is 28 cfs that's going to be more than most internal drain area map flows unless you have a significant area off-site coming to it so you just need to have that kind of gut feel built in um, to do design work, really, uh, before we even get into ditch calculations. So I really do firmly believe that. Sometimes people laugh at me when I say, oh, you just need to have a gut feel about it. No, play around with this, get good at it, know your Mannings, um, get, get solid in your ability to estimate or not necessarily estimate the flow that would be in it, but to have a, uh, yeah, we don't even need to check that. It's fine. 
or versus, okay, we might need to check that one. It's a little tight there. We might need to confirm that we don't need to line this stitch to get enough capacity or put it in a pipe because we've got only half a foot deep and uh, we got 10 CFS going to it. So like areas that like that where it gets a little questionable, you should be able to spot those areas going through the cross sections in a project. So you should be able to have uh, eliminate most of the project if you've got a lot of right away just by, hey, I know I've got four feet deep ditches here and five foot bottom widths, it's not going to be an issue. Um, that's going to help you out. So play with this. That's why this is in here. It's also in here where, where you do have some of those situations where you want to do a specific check um, to do. So now we'll get started on using some of the longer stretches of ditch calculations for a longer stretch. How I would go about this, usually I, I have yet to see a plan set, uh, maybe one that uh, someone on our internal team that that provides a lot more detail sometimes. But um, as far as reviewing plans from others, I think generally the client does not expect to see your ditch calculations, but it's something you should be um, confident that your ditches have capacity and doing checks where needed. Um, and it's good to do checks for, for shear as well. As far as how much detail to go on them, this is an area where we could go in way too much detail or um, very easily because there's miles and miles of ditches and you know we do iterations of the project so i recommend kind of waiting till that's till it's down and that's why you need to have a feel for it because you need to to know it's going to work beforehand and so we'll walk through some of that um and then what i would recommend is you're going to have the the actual design files the corridor open as well as your internal drainage area map. So I'm going to start on the westbound frontage road, for example, on this project. And I'm going to be working, having kind of the drainage area map open and as well as the 3D the design models open to be able to pull some of the geometry and then put that into our spreadsheet to let it do the calculations. And then um, I'm just going to kind of work the way through the alignment. So we've got a ditch along the westbound frontage road here. I would just kind of keep on going. Um, so let me start out by introducing you to the spreadsheet a little bit more. So we do have this raw data tab. This is really from Geopack days where we would have a ditch profile. Um, a ditch profile that we could spit out onto a, a, a note notepad file and then copy it in here and then we had a macro built in that would format it into what this inter ditch geometry had uh, now that we're in ord i don't really see us using this as much i think we'll be straight up entering the data here and how we do that is we're going to enter in the ditch profile station, a station for the ditch to give it a distance, and then the elevation that the ditch is, and then we'll give some of the basic geometry, the bottom width, the side slope, and the depth. This would be the maximum depth that we want to want the ditch to be able to have in design. Give it some kind of Manning's in value, put 0.035 here for. Uh, this will be a grass line ditch. Um, the, I've really, I'm going to take this stuff out and kind of walk walk through it in the video. But um, as far as the profile station and elevation, and then all this is formulaic, and it figures out which way, which direction the ditch is going, and that will be copied into the next sheet. So we'll. We'll get to that uh, eventually. So as far as level of detail, we're going to look 
somewhat at a drainage area by drainage area basis is how I would recommend. Unless there are significant changes in this stretch of ditch somewhere. Um, so this area, this on-site area, for example, DAB1 goes to this ditch that I'm looking at, and I'm not going to calculate the ditch flow at every point. That's where I'm saying you can get really crazy with it. I'm going to look at, OK, this drainage area computes how much flow. So I could get that looking at our tables on the project, which are um, but I have those open. Right. Yeah. Here's my drainage area table. So for DAB1, 2.19 acres, I've got a 10 year discharge of 4.2 CFS. So I would go ahead and into that, that'll go in on the next page where that ditch will go. And I would enter that DAB1, my design Q of 4.2 CFS. Now I know that 4.2 CFS isn't going at every point in this ditch. I'm just going to be a little bit conservative with the calculations. And I'll probably just have one ditch that I analyze for this whole stretch unless the slope changes drastically and then I might split it in two. And if that case, if that happens, I might estimate the flow for an the upstream one and, and then the downstream, I might just kind of eyeball that. I wouldn't change my drainage areas or do that for it because, again, these are just, these should just be verification. We're really just looking for places where we have shear problems and where we might have ditch capacity problems. So I open up my model and I've got cross sections going for this area. Um, what I might do here is kind of look at, okay, let me use my civil analysis. And here at zero plus zero zero, my flow line is 479.34. Um, let's just go ahead and enter that in the ditch geometry. I could base it on the frontage road stationing instead. It would just be a little more work. So in this case, I just put notes to help out anyone that might pick this up that the call out is based on the ditch station, which starts at 20 plus 70 if I were looking at the actual westbound frontage road. So the westbound frontage road alignment is um, right here. You can see we're at about actually 2000 plus 70. Glad I checked that. So 2000 plus 70. So I just grabbed this start station of the ditch. So I'm just looking at the ditch itself or what I'm going to put in the spreadsheet to do my calculations. Zero, zero. And then I might go down to kind of the end of the drainage area. Um, but as I take my cursor, well, first off, let me look there in the cross section view. I can see that. Yes, my my flow line is about what we said there. This is a little a little downstream of that point. Um, so that's OK. It's not the exact point I clicked on in plain view, but I can get a feel for the geometry by looking at the cross section here. So let me measure off the bottom width here is about five feet. Um, my side slopes, I could confirm that. I believe they're six to one. Oops, messed up there. It's four to one. 
more like four to one. So five feet bottom width, four to one side slopes. If I look at the depth I have available. Um, I certainly have to this point, which is 42. Really probably wouldn't be an issue to be even higher than that. So that's what's that 479 to 482. I know by feel I've been doing these so long. If I have three feet of ditch for this two acre drained area, we are going to have plenty of capacity. So I'm just going to call it three feet of depth here. Uh, this is actually four feet, four feet. I'll go ahead and clear this stuff out because we'll just be entering it as we go. Give my spreadsheet for breathing up on me. Here we go. So five feet, four to one, four to one, three feet of depth. We've done that part. Uh, now we're going to get kind of go down here and get the next station, the next BPI in the ditch profile. So I may say, if I just look at this, see if I need to split it up into many. Um, you see the slope here, it's 1.5147%. And I can see in the fundal plane view elements that the bottom width is staying pretty consistent. 1.8%, all that stuff is, you know, here we start getting to 2.55. Oh, maybe I will introduce another BPI about there just to capture that change in slope where it goes from 1.8 to 2.5. And honestly, I might be overkilling it here, but it's not going to be, I'm not going to get too crazy is the main thing. So let me put in this point, 1 plus 30.70, 477.19. Y'all help me remember that. 1 plus 30, 0.70, 477 Again, 1 plus 30.70, 477. Yeah, I got pretty close there. Um, I'll just pull up a cross section somewhere. Let me move that somewhere over there. Make sure things are looking pretty similar. So at the four to one, uh, this might actually notice that this might actually be a six to one on the back slope. Nope, still looks like four to one. Four to one. Yeah. So. Consistent geometry, just different elevations. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. I'm gonna keep going like that through. Let me get a few more. Probably go to the end of this drainage area. You could also reference the drainage areas in to help you out. I do civil analysis on 2.65%. Okay, it's somewhere in here. Now it got to 7.7%. So that's probably dropping down before the culvert. So I'm going to. Still pretty flat. I'll probably go all the way where I see that steep slope. Where is that? Right in here. 
I'll just go kind of all the way to the end here where it's still pretty flat. So I'll pick a point. I'll use a ditch BPI here. Um, or I could actually, instead of trying to remember these, I should just be taking notes. So 4 plus 22 and 471.17. This is partly an art, partly a science. So 422, 471.17. Seven. While this is the same, let me flip across section and confirm that. We're in here. Okay, and again, this ties into, I'm not sure why my, I must have something turned off on the existing terrain. Usually that shows up in the cross section too, so I'm not sure why that is not. Um, but I can see that we still have uh, the five foot bottom width. We still got probably the four to one side slope and uh, at least three feet of depth, probably more. 471 to 475. I can easily call that three or four feet of depth, but I guarantee you the water's not going to get that high. So we've got that entered in, and you can see how. It's it would be pretty, you know, not too hard to make some some really good headway through a project in a short amount of time with this spreadsheet. Now, the next step once you is kind of going through all these. Now, what you don't have to worry about is if the ditch starts going up. Um, and so. If it starts right now, it's going down. If the next station it starts going up so that you would really want to analyze it looking kind of going the other way. So if my ditch profile is. It's going this way. You know, you're going to want to analyze it from here to here and this is my cue, but if it's some for some at some point starts going that way, then you're really wanting to analyze it like that. And your drainage area should already reflect that by the time you're doing these calculations. But as far as the spreadsheet, this is what these K and L, this is what that takes care of. Because then once you get all this data, then you're going to take this, this sequence here, and you're going to copy it into your, take out what's there. You're going to paste the values. From that sequence into this stitch capacity and shear. Okay. And then all three of these, so we're just, we're looking, we're kind of in the same drainage area. And this is where don't get carried away. Like you're looking at different starts at different points in the ditch. Sure. Um, but as far as for making sure the capacity is okay, you know, yeah, it doesn't have the full 4.2 CFS here. So you're just checking the shear and checking the capacity. Don't worry, because at different slopes, because the first one we looked at it has this smaller slope, more than 1.64, and then then it went up to 2.07, and then it the last stretch is down to like 1.9% or 
0.0194. And then this last stretch we're going to do is even steeper. Um, but don't get carried away with thinking you need. You can split it up if you want to, but I'd recommend just eyeballing it for what we're needing here or just using the full queue. So unless it gets really tight and you're like, man, we don't have room and our ditch capacity is showing that it's we don't have enough, but you think we might and we can't get right away and can't make a bigger ditch, then you want to prove it and you're having to mess with concrete lining to make it, you know, at that point, you can get more detailed if you need to. But for how big these projects are that we're doing, this is not something we usually submit. Um, we got to be efficient at this. So I'm going to do one more point and then I'll show what we'll do with that tab that we're looking at there. Because as we saw here, it started to really steepen up. So that's a point where we might have some need for channel lining. So here it's showing 7 point uh, seven seven percent. So let me go on. And then. Eight percent. That's practically the same. Nine percent. So let me just do that whole stretch because what I'm expecting is we might need channel lining here. So I'll take this point at five plus seventy seven. 5 plus 77.84, 5 plus 78, call it that, and elevation 458.86. So that's going to yield a steeper slope. Let me pull up a cross section in here. I think we're still looking at about you know, maybe the bottom width gets, I can just see in plan view, it changes a little bit. Uh, to, uh, to two. Um, It's only two down here at the very end. Um, I'm just going to pretend the whole thing's still five feet. It's more the slope that's going to drive the need for the lining that I expect we'll need here. So. Now I'm going to take this sequence this far. So in the ditch capacity and shear, we copy and paste the values. You can also paste the formats for the colors. Um, I don't know why. I'm not sure. I think you just need to paste the values and that will get what you need in there. This is still the same drainage area, so I'm going to put that same info here. 4.2 is the design queue. Again, we're pulling that from the drainage area map, so this is DAB1 here, all this flow. And then we've looked at tables that show DAB1 has a 10 year flow of 4.2 CFS. And that's good. Okay. Now we have entered. comes up here. So on this, geometrically, we're saying the ditch is about three feet deep. So that's the max amount of flow we're saying that this could have. I wasn't too exact in measuring that because, again, I have a a good feel for what we're going to actually need there. So that shows up here, maximum depth. Now we only have 4.2 CFS, so it's not going to get three feet deep on a five foot flat bottom with these kind of slopes. So let's look at our 
our slopes again. We have that one with 7.89% slope. Um, and then the last one with 3.54%. really think we've we really only looked at these three sequences so far. So on my ditch capacity here, I could probably take that one out for now. So that last part was the steeper slope 7.9 percent that's the one i'm i'm kind of curious about um, but anyways we've got our design queue we've got the maximum depth in there now what's the actual depth so that depends on the flow and that's more of a um in, in the geometry of your ditch so what you have to do with the spreadsheet is toggle with your actual depth until you're Manning's Q at actual depth is close to your actual Manning's Q. And just due to the nature of these calculations, it's not, it doesn't need to be super exact. Everything we're doing here is mostly ballpark, as long as you get kind of the slopes generally entered in there correctly. So I've had, I've gone through this one before, and I know this one's about 0.31. And if you did not make it to where it landed on exactly 4.2 CFS and it was 4.35, I don't know, you, you'll get a feel for when it when it matters and when it doesn't. So this here, but you can get it close. It's not that hard. So now we'll just go through different sections of the ditch that we have. So let me do 0.3 again because it's probably close to that. I could get you to 0.5, so I could try 0.29, 4.2, there you go. And then the steeper one, it's going to be less depth because it's steeper. So 0.25 maybe, still too much, 0 0.22, 0 0.1. Point two three, still 5.5 over here. I'm looking at this number here. So point two, and that's close. I would never you got a lot of ditches to go through when you're doing all this. So yeah, good enough. Now let's look how our shear is. So this is where once you got that entered, now we have you're kind of ignoring see these matched ditch capacities. 397. 446, 871. That's how I know by when I have four CFS, just from doing enough of these, you'll get to know that, hey, yeah, that's going to be enough capacity. Now, shear, I'm not as sure about. Um, so I like to check it. So we've got this is our maximum shear stress that's being calculated. And you can see, especially on that last one, that it is um, pretty close to the permissible shear stress for the seating without soil retention blanket. So I might propose um, seating with soil retention blanket just to be on the safe side for that one. And really, I might probably in design, when I see those kind of slopes, I probably am going to do some kind of um, some kind of rock there, which is going to have more of a shear stress. Uh, so what you're looking at is this check here. And, you know, when you see your, these calculations are to guide you, when you see you're kind of pushing the envelope on, Shear stress, you might just go ahead and propose some kind of 
uh, either soil retention blankets or some kind of either. In this case, our client prefers stone rib wrap instead of concrete lining. So that's probably what I will note here. I'll probably put that. In the notes, so I'll probably just do some kind of highlight here. As I'm going through this, maybe put a comment. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of my walkthrough on using this what i would recommend is probably you know i'm going to do this for a whole side of the road a whole specific ditch and then i might either make a new spreadsheet for the next ditch or put some you know put some headings here and put headings down here and carry these equations for the next ditch but i want to keep my calculations nice and neat so I'm going to enter the geometry here and then perform the calculations in this tab and if you need to do specific calculations at just one point you can use this single capacity ditch calc um, I've done that earlier in the project for a specific location here the westbound ramp at 57573 to make sure it had uh, enough capacity but um, that's pretty much all there is to it i think this is helpful if you're just trying to um, show ditch calculations for one profile of a really long ditch so uh, i think I'll, we've developed this a long while ago but i think i know the spreadsheet can look a little bit overwhelming and be hard to get into so i'm hoping this will uh, help you all to jump into it and know what you're doing there Anyways, hope y'all enjoy and happy, happy digits.